Hi, Kevin Blanche. Today I want to talk about the science world, the marine biologist world, the academia world that has fucking got the 2.0 blackout of Fukushima. Weather experts have looked into the Pacific Ocean south of mainland Japan and seen something that troubles them. They found the levels of acid is rising rapidly. The experts are worried about carbon dioxide in the atmosphere dissolving into seawater. They warn that could exacerbate global warming. Academia, where the fuck are you? You motherfuckers, where the fuck? We're going on 600 motherfucking days. They analyzed data gathered over the past 30 years. They found the acid level rose at five times the pace of that over the last 250 years. 600 fucking days. Are you so fucking lazy? Is it? I guess there are no studies. That, who's is the only one? That, really? Do we need to go get the SS middle fucking fight? Gil gonna take you fuckers on a three-hour tour out along the fucking Pacific and drop some more? Where the fuck? Even Greenpeace, what happened to you? Where the fuck are these studies? Emissions of carbon dioxide have increased dramatically. Rising levels of acid can hamper the growth of coral reefs and plankton and upset the marine ecosystem. We know that 90. Okay, we know that it slowly penetrates your bone marrow. And it gives you fucking what I have, leukemia, as I've been in the fight from fucking hell. I want you people to know this. The fish that Kozo Endo and his crew managed to catch on Monday are not headed for market, but to a nearby laboratory. They're fishing in waters off the coast of Japan's Fukushima nuclear plant crippled by last year's tsunami when its failing reactors spewed radiation into the sea. While many fish in the area are below the country's permitted radiation levels, bottom feeders that live near the seafloor are still topping the bar. You know, I want to talk about SR-90. I want to talk about plutonium. I want to talk about cesium-137. Marine chemist Ken Busler says fish should now be free from radiation a year and a half after the meltdown. It's a salt, cesium, like potassium, so very quickly if you shut off the source, they should be going down a few percent a day. In two or three months, it'd be practically all gone, and we don't see that in the fish that they're sampling throughout 2012. A respected geochemist known for his studies of radioactive fallout in the Black Sea after Chernobyl, Busler hit the headlines last month when he suggested that radiation could still be leaking. There has to be a source. and. Uh, they're cooling those reactors quite extensively. Some of that water is getting back into the ocean, either actively being pumped out after some decontamination or through leaks in the buildings. They're not able to contain all of the water that they use to cool. But plant operator TEPCO denies the claim, and the Japanese ministry responsible for radiation sampling across Japan said they are excluding that possibility from their inquiries at the moment. So we've sit on pins and needles and we've waited for those scientific studies to come in. We've waited for those great marine biologists. We've waited for those great universities on the coast of California. We've waited for them as they know that precious beauty is their world. The University of Washington, Oregon State, University of Oregon, Cal Berkeley, Stanford, UCLA, San Diego State, on and on and on. We've waited. Oh, them studies will be right out. As whistleblowers have been coming to me from different universities. Oh, oh yeah, we have them, have them. Because we know this, factually. We know, factually, the TEPCO is a bunch of fucking liars. Well, good news for sushi lovers and not so great news if you're an Atlantic bluefin tuna. The Atlantic Bluefin Catch Quota is going up next year. Members of the International Commission for the Cons Conservation of Atlantic Tunas agree at a meeting in Morocco that the total bluefin quota for 2013 can be raised to 13,400 tons. That's up 500 tons from this year. The Commission is responsible for management of bluefin fisheries in the Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea. The decision was made after a survey concluded stocks of bluefin are showing signs of improvement. The members also agreed to gradually introduce a system to track where fish are caught and how they are distributed. They agreed to upgrade measures against illegal bluefin fishing. We know they're fucking liars. We know the Japanese government are nothing but fucking liars. 
We cannot believe a fucking word they say. So what have we counted on? And I've said the whole time, over and over on this vlog, as we backdoored the media and exposed us when Gupta went fishing at Lake Chernobyl, when they used not only malice by not reporting, but, excuse me, malice by not reporting, Malice, malice, criminals, criminals, as we know the IAA are nothing but fucking liar, grandstanding, caviar-eating fucking criminals. As I see the report the other day, don't eat the caviar, they're telling you. Good, you IAA motherfuckers, eat it up. But the academia world and all you assholes sitting in Europe saying, all oh, these fucking Americans, where's these studies? What the fuck? You don't eat fish? You don't fucking live off the, you don't fucking feed off the fucking greatest food basket in the world? Where the fuck are you? We can't go back. We can't! Once the genie's out of the bottle, it's out of the bottle! It enters your bone marrow. We're seeing traces of SR fucking 90, and I'm getting leaked by fucking university. Whistleblowers are leaking me. SR 90 is showing up all over the fucking fish. Big time! I know factually it is! I will not report the fucking leaks, and I'm not going to sit and fucking report it until they are verified. Why? Because this is so dramatically fucking important. Those studies from the ocean mean everything. You fucking scientists, you're going to catch a cold from the ice inside your fucking soul. You motherfuckers, the blackout continues. We dealt with the media. Guys like me, Miss Milk and Clown, fucking... Christina Jules, right? So many of you out there. So many have joined this fucking cause that I never left. So many. We backdoored the media blackout. We overcome. How can we fucking back there now? The science fucking blackout. We need those reports out of the Mississippi so fucking bad. We have no idea. We know factually that it's been leaking in the Pacific. We know. We know how much. We know Tepco will never tell us. We know the IA will never tell us. The NRC will never tell us. The media will never tell us. We need those studies so fucking bad. As you're going to catch a cold from that ice. And I'll tell you what. You think you're avoidable from this. And this is why the fucking downfall of this entire fucking country. A sophisticated four-legged robot is poised to go where no one has gone before. Inside the damaged reactors at Fukushima Daiichi. Researchers at electronics maker Toshiba developed the animal-like machine to help emergency workers know what they're dealing with inside the destroyed reactors. The radio-controlled robot stands about one meter tall, has four 70-centimeter-long legs, six video cameras, and a radiation detector. It can step over obstacles up to 40 centimeters high and climb up and down stairs. A small vehicle fitted with a camera can be unloaded from the top of the robot to roam tiny spaces like the undersides of pipes. Toshiba officials say the machine can work for 300 days in a high radiation environment. We'll improve machines by making it possible for multiple units to work together as one and work as humans in places humans can't go. Toshiba officials are proposing that Tokyo Electric Power Company, the operator of the Fukushima plant, use the robot to research how to scrap the damaged reactors. Decommissioning in the wake of the meltdown is expected to take from 30 to 40 years. A Japanese robot designed to withstand high levels of radiation and extreme heat at damaged nuclear plants such as Fukushima froze on Wednesday on its first public. Demonstration. Toshibi Corp unveiled Japan's own nuclear-proof robot on Wednesday, during the demonstration. The robot experienced a case of stage fright. The shuffling tetrapod locked up and suddenly froze after it tried to balance itself, forcing technicians to carry it away. Expert says maximum M10 earthquake possible a Japanese seismologist says. The maximum scale of an earthquake occurring anywhere in the world would be around magnitude 10. Judging from Earth's size and the lengths of quake triggering faults, a magnitude 10 quake would be 32 times more powerful than the 9.0 earthquake that hit northeastern Japan in March last year. The magnitude minus 9.5 quake recorded off Chile in 1960 is the world's largest known earthquake to date. A magnitude 10 quake would occur, for example, 
If an 8,800 km fault along a northern Pacific Rim trend shifts 20 meters, the researcher says such an earthquake would result in tremors lasting 20 minutes to one hour and trigger days of tsunamis. The researcher stresses he's not saying a magnitude 10 quake would definitely occur. But he notes that Japan was hit by a magnitude 9 earthquake when it had been expecting a maximum magnitude 8. So people should be aware of what could happen. It has been one and a half years since the Fukushima nuclear disaster. Greenpeace has been to Fukushima City and the Itata region for regular checks of radiation levels. We have found that in general those government monitoring stations do not give a reliable indication of the radiation risks. The, the levels vary a lot in Fukushima City, but there are areas where, for example in parks, where the levels are above one microsieverts per hour at one meter, sometimes up to two or two and a half microsieverts per hour. This is something we should be concerned about because those higher radiation levels can create a health impact for a larger population on the longer term. The government is attempting to decontaminate Itata village with the intention to let people move back to their houses. いくら除染してもまた元に戻ります。で、これ無理して返されれば、おのずと最後には何年か後には自分で身を立つ人が出てくるんじゃないかと、そういう心配もしています。The government has not been very successful in effectively decontaminating areas in Fukushima city and protecting the people who are currently living there. The former Tokyo governor says Japan needs to look at the possibility of acquiring nuclear arms. The outspoken politician made the remark while preparing for a snap election next month. 80-year-old Shintaro Ishihara now leads a new opposition group. He talked to foreign correspondents in Tokyo. It would be good to conduct a simulation on Japan holding nuclear weapons because they can act as a deterrent. The decision of acquiring them or not can be decided later. Ishihara surprised the public in April by announcing that the Tokyo government would buy the privately owned Senkaku Islands in the East China Sea. Ishihara's remark led to their nationalization. The purchase has caused the current state of strained relations between China and Japan. You regressed, it destroyed you, it caused collateral damage. That is what fucking cesium does. That's what fucking 90 does. That's what fucking 239 does. That's what 240 does. As people say, oh, the half-life, 14 years, 28 years. Oh, fuck. Let's get real. It slowly enters your bone marrow. It slowly enters your bone marrow. And gives you leukemia. And I'm fucking here to fucking tell you. Anybody's been in this fucking fight. Oh my fucking God. 
Your future's gone. I have no fucking future. I live one day at a fucking time. I don't know if I'm going to wake up in the fucking morning, go in and be sick, and then fuck can't say, fuck Kevin, fuck chemo on again. Let's see if you can fucking live. This is an evil battle from hell that kills most fucking people.